Welcome to Life-Giving Order Messages, where I expound upon the Word of God and through the internet deliver it to you. My name is Rev. Todd Laddick, and I'm bringing to you part four of a four-part series entitled Courageous, with today's specific message entitled Courage to be First, based off of Philippians chapter 3, verses 10 through 16. So let us dive into the Word today. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection, and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus had ma has made me his own. Beloved. I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Jesus Christ. Let us, let those of us, then, who are mature, be of the same mind, and if you think differently about anything, this too God will reveal to you. Only let us hold fast to what we have attained. Amen. It takes courage to take the first step forward to face evil. To dare to be extraordinary for God. Rescuing slaves requires skill and careful planning. It requires reading, Harriet. Can you read a sign or a map? Can you read it all? I put my attention on trying to hear God's voice more clearly. Do you know what would happen if you got caught? They would torture you until you pointed them right to this office. You got lucky, Harriet. And there's nothing more you can do. Don't you tell me what I can't do. I made it this far on my own. God was watching, but my feet was my own. Running, bleeding, climbing, nearly drowned. Nothing to eat for days and days, man. I made it. So don't you tell me what I can't do. Harriet Tubman was born a slave in Maryland named Arminta Ross. Nicknamed Minty for short. And from the moment she was born, she was viewed and treated as property. Worse yet, she was a woman, a female, and thus her treatment was even worse. Slaves had no rights. They had no voice. They had no identity outside of what the white people told them they were house servants, cotton pickers, or worse, slaves were viewed no differently than horses and mules. This is the reality of America. The history some wish would just wash itself away. Oh, it happened so long ago. The slaves have been freed for 158 years. Jim Crow was lifted, schools integrated. Were they, though? And there was the civil rights movement. Dr. King spoke of a dream. And look, we have, we've ha had our first black president and now our first black woman vice president. Time to move on, right? Wrong. Let Harriet Tubman remind you as we approach Black History Month, in fact, now we're in Black History Month, as to why we cannot just move on. How moving on is really escaping the kind of justice and reconciliation God ex desires. How moving on is really just an extension of our white privilege. So, back to Harriet Tubman. She had no rights. She had no hope. 
Their, the only hope she found was in a relationship with a freed black man named John Tubman. And soon she married him, and shortly after that, she changed her name to Harriet. But slaves were not allowed to marry. And as such, her getting married also caused strife. She wanted children, but any children born to slaves were slaves. How could she do that? How could she have children in a world that would treat them like mules and horses? Like oxen, like beasts of burden. Harriet, like so many slaves before her, prayed for an end to her slavery, for a chance at freedom, even if it meant escaping. But escaping was an improbable affair, and to get caught most certainly meant death. Still, Harriet did get her chance to escape, however, not with her husband. She was all alone, and she had to travel from Maryland to Philadelphia to gain her freedom. And she did. She reached Philly, utilizing the Underground Railroad, run by free slaves, white abolitionists, and members of the Religious Society of Friends, also known as Quakers. And it was there that we find her in the clip we just listened to. Now that she was free, she wanted, nay, she felt called by God to help free other slaves, slaves such as her family, her husband, and countless others. But how could an uneducated, unhealthy, epileptic Harriet carry that out. She had barely seen her own freedom, and she wanted to be part of freeing others. As you, as you could hear, she had much courage and would not take no for an answer. After all, God was calling her. And we all have goals we desire to reach in our lives. There are things we want to accomplish, glass ceilings we want to break, or perhaps walls or barriers that need to be torn down, or trying to do what others think impossible. It takes courage to press forward in the face of doubt and adversity. It takes determination and even hope to stand out, to attempt the impossible. But with Christ, my friends, with Christ, we can do all things. First, let us talk about resurrection power. To press toward our goals with resurrection mindsets is to understand that even pressing through the pain, sometimes agony, obstacles, evildoers, naysayers, and hills we have to climb, that victory awaits at the end of that victory awaits at the end of all of that. Imagine Christ even in the garden praying, Let this cup pass for me. In other words, saying, if there's any other way besides this road I'm about to trod and the pain I'm about to endure to reach this goal, please let it be so. But then he recognized and yielded to the divine plan of God and said, not my will, but yours. And at the end of that journey, there was victory for all that he had endured. Paul says to us in verse 10 of today's scripture that we ought to know 
Christ and know him in the power of the resurrection and in the sharing of his sufferings. As, re- as recipients of the resurrection, this is our call and privilege to know Christ, to know the sufferings of Christ, to know the power of the resurrection, and to know that we have that same resurrection power living within us. We can endure difficulties. We can press through pain and suffering. We can fight in the face of evil. We can reach the unreachable. And we can bounce back even when others might think all is lost. That, my friends, that is resurrection power. Second, let's talk about pressing on. In trying to reach our goals and accomplish what we set out to do, it's often easy to look back. Sometimes looking back even tempts us to go back. You, re- you may remember even the Israelites when they were escaping slavery and bondage trying to reach the promised land were tired, hungry, frustrated, and so discouraged at one point, that they said to their leaders, at least back in bondage we had food to eat and knew where we would be sleeping at night. (laughs) What they didn't know when they said that was that they were right on the edge of the promised land, but fear and doubt almost caused them to turn back and give up. Paul says, though, that we ought to forget what is behind us and focus our thoughts on what lies ahead of us. We press on. We press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Jesus Christ. Finally, let's talk about the high calling. Verse 14 of our scripture today reminds us of the high calling we have in Christ. These goals, gifts, tasks, challenges from God are just that, from God. We have to remember that this is bigger than us. It is bigger than any person or any to-do list or bucket list. We have a call from God. And think of this. If God calls us to do it, then God knows we have the ability, the strength, and the courage to do it. Friends, what is God calling you to do? Who is God calling you to speak up for? What goal is God challenging you to reach? Remember Harriet Tubman, who after leading over 300 slaves to freedom under the guidance of God, was nicknamed Moses. She trusted and followed God against all odds. And you can, too. In terms of, our, of your congregation or my congregation, depending who's listening to this, what is God calling our churches to do? How do we reach our goals with resurrection power and the mindset of the high calling? What things in your towns and counties being brought to your attention? What what things are being brought to your attention? What social or racial ills? What classism do we find? What people do we see? And the and last the last and the least of these. 
being overlooked by a people who have turned away from God for their own interests. I'll ask that again. What things in your towns and counties are being brought to your attention? What social or racial ills, what classism do we find? What people do we see, the last and the least of these? Being overlooked by a people who have turned away from God for their own interests. Christ, my friends, Christ is calling us to respond. And I pray that we, Christ's body, do so resolutely in faith and in trust. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this uh, encouraging, inspiring, and hopefully challenging message. Let us not rest easy. Let us not take for granted the freedom we have and assume that everybody else has it. Let us not sit idly by in our privilege while the underprivileged go without. Lord, you have called us to use our station in life, to use our talents, our gifts, our abilities, and our voices to stand up for justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you. Give us the strength to do so. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Friends, thank you for tuning in. It is always an honor to have you join me uh, for these messages, and uh, I hope that you are getting something out of them, that they are inspiring, encouraging, and challenging you to to grow in your faith as we all have room to grow. Um, as always, if this is uh, if this is your weekly uh, feeding for the week, if this is your church, so to speak, uh, and this is the message you receive. Uh, every week, then I would uh, encourage you to check out the episode notes. And if you are able to uh, and feel so called, uh, there are links there to support uh, First United Methodist Church of Newton, the community that I serve. Uh, I, I promise you that, that uh, all support goes to further the mission and the ministry of Jesus Christ in our community. And given this pandemic, we um, certainly... Uh, we definitely have uh, struggled uh, financially as all churches have and your support uh, will certainly be appreciated and much helpful uh, with that said uh, if you if this is supplemental and you attend a church elsewhere then by all means give to your church as I'm sure they need it as much as we do so uh, in all things remember we are called to give uh, and I hope that you you will do so no matter where you give Uh, But remember, friends, you are richly blessed so that you may be a blessing to others. Amen. Go in peace.